So another detail that you need in order to understand what's happening in the end is that the structure of wind-driven flows and pressure gradient-driven flows are different. So in a situation where you don't have any um, Ekman layers, okay? So this is in very, very shallow water. You don't have any Ekman layers. So what you essentially get is if you have a wind-driven flow, you get a, get a situation where the flow changes from maximum flow near the surface and then linear decreases, it disappears with depth. Pressure gradient driven flow actually has a slightly different structure. Okay? Pressure gradient flow actually has a structure where the flow is, um, doesn't change much with depth, you know, near the surface, and then you get a stronger change near the, near the bottom. Okay? And if you combine these flows, you actually get a situation, you don't get a cancellation, you get a combined flow, where you have flow driven by the wind in one direction near the surface, and uh, you have a, a um, an, an undercurrent underneath. Okay, so I, not going into the details, it's just what I tell you is that if you have a wind driven flow in one direction and a pressure gradient driven flow in the opposite direction, they don't cancel out each other. They actually create an undercurrent and a surface current. Okay. And that's also important to, to know. Okay. All right.